So, I uploaded a video response to Lauren Chen's video about incels getting plastic surgery. It's common for women and normie men to bully and bash incels online. So that very obscure video, still managed to attract some disgusting blue pill haters. One of them had the nerve to upload two hate videos about me after an argument that we had in the comment section of that video. An argument that he initiated. Based on his comments to me, he doesn't objectively look at the reasons for why some people have miserable lives. He actually fabricates the reasons for why we are suffering. Those fabrications are based on nothing more than his own ignorance and stupidity. I would think that if his life was really that great, he'd be spending that free time doing something other than complaining about incels and giving ignorant unsolicited advice to people who don't want anything to do with him. But of course regular people need to have people to look down on to feel good about themselves. The hater obviously disagrees with me but doesn't have a valid argument. He comes at me with this hyper-masculinity bullshit about how me complaining somehow equates to me not being a man or I guess being less of a man. What scientific proof does he have that emotional turmoil as well as complaining and whining, are only supposed to be female traits? Now, I didn't just randomly bring up gold digging women in the thread. The reason why I brought it up was because that fucking moron told me that getting a career or business should be my purpose in life. As if nothing else should matter. He claimed that everything else would fall in place around me. In other words, I need to make a lot of money in order for my involuntary celibacy to end. I strongly doubt that he had a career before having sex with women. I strongly doubt that the well-off women that he mentioned, had careers before having sex with men. So why in the fuck should I have to to get sex that they got without careers? Statistically the average American loses their virginity in their late teens. Do you think that most people who are in their late teens have careers? Even if I had the opportunity to get into a career anytime soon, it would only attract freeloaders. Because if women hate me now and they would like me after getting a career, then what do you think that their acceptance would be based on? Obviously, it would be my money that they would like. Not me. That's not what I consider to be, in place. I already told him to look up an example of a freeloading woman who made a great deal of money. In the example that I gave, this woman made way more money than her husband. But of course he conveniently glossed over that part. I said that, in America, most women who freeload off of their boyfriends are middle class. I gave an example. You can go read the comment for yourself. Women like seeing a man in his work element because she sees that the man has a good and stable way of making money. Money that she will want him to spend on her. And she also perceives that as being more security for a family if he has children with her. Because of course there's no such thing as bad parents that are not poor, right? Judging by how many men have talked about being victims of gold diggers, it must be hard to notice the signs that they supposedly show. Also, why doesn't he focus on telling women that it's not hard to refrain from being gold diggers? Why doesn't he focus on criticizing the people who cause the threat to exist rather than the people who don't do a good enough job of avoiding the threat? More than likely it's because he's accepting of that kind of behavior. Later in the video, he basically contradicted his claim that women generally aren't freeloaders. Cause if a woman is not intending to freeload off of me then she will not care about how much money I make. So if I had a lot of money then the only women that I would have access to would be horse. Income level is something that people only have partial control of and having money doesn't automatically make someone a safe person to be around, it is in fact superficial to discriminate based on income level. But when it becomes common for poor women to be involuntarily celibate because of their lack of income, then you can make the argument that it's acceptable to discriminate against men based on class. Until then, they can shove that bigoted double standard up their sorry asses. Any woman who gets with a man based on how much money he makes, deserves to be treated badly in a relationship. Because she is a vile human being, she deserves any bad thing that could happen to her. According to this hater, you need to actually have personal experience with something in order to know about it. You can't learn anything from research or the lives of people around you. 
he made a comment to me about how incel logic is the same logic that rapists have. So he must be a rapist being that he talked about rapist logic as if he knows about it. That's pretty fucked up. He tried to compare his past situation to my current situation. It's not comparable because based on his comments, he always had ample opportunity to succeed. I didn't. He wasn't successful at first because he was a dysfunctional fuck up. I'm not and I never have been. If anything, that makes him lesser than me. He is just a lesser person with opportunity. And that is privilege. Not merit. He claimed that looks don't matter when it comes to employment opportunities. There's evidence that proves otherwise. Just Google, how looks affect employment opportunities. The way you look, affects what kind of prejudgments people make about you and it affects how people perceive your actions. That is not just the case in casual social situations. That is the case in business as well. Because business still involves socializing with other people. By now that should be common sense. Nowadays, most career fields in America are no longer male-dominated. Some are female-dominated. In a country with more than 255 million adults including 150 million men, he doesn't have competition in his career field? Bullshit. He had competition. Much of his competition probably gets discriminated against just like I do. He saw opportunity. But other people could have easily chosen not to grant him what he was looking at. It was not necessarily deserved opportunity or opportunity that he had to get. And no my hardship is not my responsibility to change. Other people turn me down for the jobs that would allow me to get what I want. I don't turn myself down. Therefore, logically speaking, it's not up to me to change it. Why? Because it's not my fault. If it is, prove it. Show tangible evidence of me doing illegal or inappropriate things that disqualify me from job opportunities. Show tangible evidence of me turning myself down for a job. Show tangible evidence of me forcing employers to turn me down. He claimed that employers turned me down because they found people who could do the jobs better. How did they know that the people could do the jobs better than me if they didn't give me the chance to do the jobs? They didn't. But the idiot went on to give an example that contradicted his claim. He talked about some hot woman that he knew of that got hired for a good paying job but she basically sucked at it and ended up getting fired. The fact that she even got the opportunity despite not being able to do the job was privilege based on her looks. And it contradicts the idea that employers know whether or not you can do the job, prior to hiring you. Which is basically what he claimed is the case when he said that they found people who could do the job better than me. I wonder how many ugly men could have done the job but were not given the opportunity that she was. She will easily get more chances. Just like the bastard that I'm responding to got more chances after he got fired from multiple jobs. Must be nice. An individual has to have enough money to pay for a school that would give them skills. That was kind of my point when I mentioned not having enough money to get into the career that I wanted. Because of course building a reputation in a career starts with getting into the career. All basic common sense stuff. Obviously, a person needs money to start a business. Where does that money come from? A job that would pay someone enough money to start a business. The logic he is using is like telling someone to climb Mount Everest without any climbing gear. It doesn't make any sense. This is why I dislike unsolicited blue pill advice. They are judging and giving advice about predicaments that are foreign to them. What he says about me being submissive is true. I am submissive. I should do what the hypermasculine clown tells me to do and stop being submissive. If people won't let me have opportunities to earn and opportunities to fuck, I should just take what I want, right? If women won't give me sex because they discriminate against me based on things that I have zero to only partial control over, I should just rape them like he probably does. If employers won't choose to hire me for a job that I qualified for and that would pay me enough to buy the things I want and need in life, I should just kill people and take what I want. 
that's what it means to not be submissive in a civilized society. That dumb piece of shit doesn't even understand his own advice. But to some degree, he is right. I do submit. I submit every time I carry out an order that was given to me by a boss at my job. I submit to the law and to the government. So it's true that I submit at times. But can I let you in on a little secret? So do the good majority of other people on the fucking planet. Including this ignorant clown. People submit to people who have legal authority over them. Doing business with people, often requires people to submit to other people. That's a normal part of civilized society. Because a society cannot be civilized without people being willing to submit. The funny thing about this is that, the whining that he is whining about, is a case in which I'm refusing to submit. What this dumb fuck failed to acknowledge, is that me and other incels publicly condemning our oppressors, is defiance. Which is the opposite of submission. If we were submissive, we would stop our so-called whining and be accepting of being treated unfairly. As we are basically told to do. It's people like him who actually want us to submit. They hate the fact that we point out normie fuckery and they use cheap shaming tactics to try and silence us. He doesn't have any actual proof that his claims are true. So he gives a bunch of anecdotes and I guess he thinks that they are a valid way to back up the stupid shit that he says. Of course there have been multiple studies that show that height is a determining factor for whether or not a woman is willing to have sex with a man or be in a romantic relationship with a man. There has been a shit ton of social media posts and hate speech that has been done by women themselves, about how they are unattracted to short men. There has been a shit ton of footage where women admit that height is a determining factor for whether or not they will be a man's girlfriend. And what evidence did that asshat give to the contrary? You guessed it? Anecdotal evidence. He gave an example of a financially well-off 5'5 five five man who got with a woman that claimed to like his intelligence. And I'm sure all of the average to above average height men who easily get laid, have the same level of intelligence that his friend supposedly has, right? If this actually happened, it wasn't his intelligence that she liked. It was his money. But she didn't want to admit that because if she had, he might have dumped that fucking whore. He said that women don't like me because I'm a fucking asshole and that he doesn't like me for that very same reason. That's projection. He doesn't like me cause he's a fucking asshole. As evidenced by his immature ad hominem based arguments, victim blaming and shaming tactics. So the difference here is that, I actually have legitimate reasons for calling him an asshole. He's just calling me an asshole cause he is stupid and childish. Women hate me for the same reasons that they hate most other so called unattractive men. And I've gone over those reasons in my videos. He has yet to disprove any of them. There are some incels who do jobs that are more useful to society than being a private investigator. Yet those jobs don't pay as much as that career. So those incels still get rejected. Obviously, women are calling that job cool because they know that he is making a lot of money from doing it. Assuming that he's telling the truth about that. If he is telling the truth about his money and dating history, then his money is probably the only thing about him that does excite women. Cause based on what he has been saying to me, it damn sure isn't his intelligence. He seems to be extremely irrational, overbearing, and condescending. I don't see how anyone could find those traits attractive. Again, if it were true that women don't owe men sex yet still fuck men that they find attractive, then the reason for them refusing to give sex to me, would not simply be that they don't owe me sex. It would be because they are discriminating against me for superficial reasons. Like I've been saying. Therefore, his claim that I don't get sex because women don't owe me sex, would still be incorrect. That was the point. I guess it went over his head. Shocker. But based on nature, women do owe men sex. Just like men owe women sex. Creatures on the planet are owed sex. So that includes both human males and females. The fact that our biology is made for sex does mean that we are supposed to have sex. The reason why our anatomy is designed for sex, 
is because every human is supposed to have sex. That is nature. Also, libidos cause us to desire and pursue sex. Because we are supposed to have sex. That is nature. Not to mention the fact that humans would not exist without sex. So yes we have to have sex. Again, basic logic and common sense. Most people who don't have sex for religious reasons, are not choosing to go through their lives as virgins. They are choosing to wait until they get married before having sex. But it's not that they don't ever intend to have sex. Now it's true that theoretically people can choose to die as virgins. People can also choose to change their gender. People can choose to have sex with wild animals. People can choose to hunt animal species to extinction. People can choose to have sex with dead bodies. People can choose to put harmful chemicals in their hair and fuck up their scalps. Just because someone can do something, doesn't mean that they are naturally or morally supposed to be doing it. What they do can still be unnatural and morally wrong. Being owed sex is not like slavery because there's no scientific evidence that humans are supposed to enslave each other. Nor are there any physical health problems that come from never being a slave. Nor is slavery necessary for humans to exist. So there's a night and day difference between being owed sex and being a slave owner or a slave. Incel logic is not the same as rapist logic. Rapists don't necessarily care about the reason for why they get rejected. Nor do they necessarily think that it's morally wrong for people to reject them for sex. Their logic is that if a person turns them down for sex, they should physically force the person to have sex with them if they want it badly enough. And they don't necessarily care whether it's right or wrong. In contrast, incel logic is that we are owed sex because creatures on the planet are naturally supposed to have sex. Most incels, don't believe that women should not be able to reject men. We believe that women should not reject men for superficial reasons. We correctly think that it's morally wrong. I don't think that any incel has ever said that it would be wrong for women to reject men that Elliot Rogers described as being, obnoxious brutes. If a person has an obnoxious personality, then that would be a justified reason to reject them. So unlike with rapist, incels care about reason for rejection. Unlike rapist, most incels acknowledge and care about the fact that it's morally wrong to physically force a person to have sex. I believe that people should hate and discriminate against the women who reject men based on superficial things. I also reserve the right to reprimand them for being unethical and oppressive. But there's a big difference between those things and thinking that it is accepted to physically attack someone for refusing to have sex with me. There's a difference between saying that women shouldn't physically or legally be able to reject men for sex, and saying that it's morally wrong for women to reject men for sex based on superficial things. There's a difference between pointing out the scientific fact that people are supposed to have sex and saying that it's acceptable to physically attack and force someone to have sex with you if they refuse to give it to you. Incel logic is not rapist logic. And truth be told, Based on what I've read and cases that I've seen or heard of, the vast majority of rapists seem to be normie men. Someone being denied sex is against nature no matter what the reason for it is. But it is not morally wrong for people to deny sex with people who are posing a threat to their safety or the safety of others. It is not wrong to deny sex to people who are unethical. But just like we are born with freedom, sex is also a birthright. Freedom can be taken away if it is abused. Just like a person can rightfully be denied sex for morality-based reasons. But it's only ethical when it is based on morality and actual personality problems. When it is done for superficial reasons, that is morally wrong. And there should be consequences and persecution for that. Everyone is owed fair treatment. This whole no one owes anything philosophy, is complete bullshit. It is not how an economy is run. Hence the reason for taxation. Hence the reason for civil rights acts. It is not how civilizations were built. Personal freedom ends when it infringes on the freedom of others. So yes there are things in life that people owe and are owed. Based on nature, sex is one of those things. It is not a privilege. 
It's a moral and natural right. People are owed sex. And whether women want to acknowledge it or not, unattractive men are in fact people. Thus unattractive men are owed sex just like everybody else is. That's not being submissive. That's being truthful. That's stating a moral and biological fact. People who say that nobody owes you anything are people who are just saying that to justify oppression and general shit behavior. People like that are cancerous to society and should be suppressed. He can't actually disprove anything that I said in the video that he commented under. So he has to attack my character. Even when he does that, his arguments are still trash. Other people's choices and actions affect my life, yet according to him I shouldn't care about how people view me. See what I mean about him being extremely irrational? He claimed that some incels agree with him. If this sack of shit were to go anywhere on the internet that is predominantly populated by incels, do you think that the majority of them would agree with him? But as unlikely as it sounds, there might be a small minority of incels who do agree with him. Some incels join normie scumbags like him in bashing incels to feel better about their own despair and to gain favor with women. But it never actually gets them laid. Any so-called incel that he, coached, into getting a date, probably wasn't an actual incel. He was probably a vol cell. If people like me are so insignificant, then why spend so much time speaking out against us? Also, if it's true that normies are not in danger of losing anything, then how come incels are constantly censored and demonized by normie propagandist? That includes mainstream demonization where people openly claim that the spread of incel ideology is a threat. I think it's pretty clear that normies feel threatened by us. They don't want people, especially the youth to collectively acknowledge the truth about their malevolent asses because they are afraid that it might change the social climate in a way that destroys their privilege. Whether it does or doesn't I'm going to condemn people that cause pain for me and people like me. That fool called me an asshole yet he's the one who's full of shit. His smug and belligerent lectures, aren't worth two cents to me. So I will not change my mind. And I made that clear in that comment thread. Listen, almost everywhere I go, people are all around me. So I have to put up with their bad behavior towards me. I have to put up with their constant disrespect as well as their discrimination against me. I am socially oppressed. I do not oppress anyone. My so-called complaining, does not oppress anyone. Nobody is being forced to watch read or listen to my content. Nobody is being forced to watch read or listen to the content of people like me. Anyone who is bothered by my so-called complaining, should piss off and stay away from my content. Simple as that. Because I refuse to change my viewpoints just so empty-headed blue pill crackpots, can feel more comfortable with my content. This piece of shit that I am responding to, can tell as many anecdotal bootstrap tales as he wants. But the fact of the matter is, in a society humans are socially and economically connected. So within a society you are not the only person who controls your life. The fact that a grown man, one who appears to be older than me at that, still doesn't know the basics of how a society works, means that he is in fact ignorant and stupid. If it wasn't for acceptance he wouldn't have anything he wouldn't be anything. That delusional fuckwit, isn't doing anything that other people aren't allowing him to do. Most people do not want to admit when their accomplishments in life were due to advantages that they had because they believe that it invalidates those accomplishments. Thus, lowering their sense of self-worth and pride. Which is pretty ironic considering how much normies accuse incels of being insecure. Now, if they weren't so fucking ignorant and perhaps insecure, they would be able to admit that they had advantages while taking pride in the fact that they used those advantages to prosper instead of letting those advantages go to waste. But it hurts them to acknowledge that most of their success in life comes from advantages that they had. So they have to make themselves out to be superior. They have to try to gaslight the oppressed as well as lie to people and even lie to themselves. If the incels that these normie bigots look down on, were treated equally, we would be just as accomplished if not more so than they are. 
he is just another foolish blue pill prick who is in denial and out of his mind. His pathetic attempts to sway our viewpoints will generally fail. The only incels that are real losers, are the ones that allow people like this shithead to shame them into silence. I'm proud to say that I'm not one of those incels.